All right, I'm gonna be honest. Lisa has tried to film this video three different times and it just hasn't worked out well for her. So now I'm gonna try. We'll see how it goes. Are you struggling to keep everything balanced in your aquarium and provide a healthy environment for your fish? Well, relax, because I've got some tips that are gonna ensure your aquarium is running at its best. Hey folks, it's John with KeepFishKeeping.com and this is a dummy's guide to a healthy aquarium. In this video, I'm gonna discuss some tips to keep the healthiest environment possible for your fish. And the first one is an absolute no-brainer. You gotta have the right filter on there. These days, when new fish keepers enter the hobby, it's very common for them to start with a starter kit. These kits are great and come with a filter that's designed to handle that aquarium size. But it's not always gonna be the appropriate size. Not necessarily. When you buy a filter that's designed for a 20 gallon aquarium, it's designed to handle an appropriately stocked tank, like six to eight smaller fish. But what if you're gonna put a whole bunch of fish in there? What happens then? Well, nothing good, I promise. The thing is, a lot of new fish keepers go a little crazy when they pick out their fish. They see all these shapes and sizes and they just want them all. When you put that many fish in a tank, everything gets turned up. You're gonna have more food, which means more waste, and all of this is gonna clog up your filter media super quick, making your filter basically useless. So the point of this is your filter needs to be sized appropriately for the amount of fish you have, not the size of your tank. We would never recommend that new fish keepers overstock their tank, but let's be real. It's gonna happen no matter what we say. If your tank has a huge load and too small of a filter, it's like having 20 people in a small room with just a tiny fan in the corner. What you need is a larger fan with a couple windows to bring in all the fresh air and circulate it around. Think of your aquariums the same way. Not only will the appropriate size filter help keep the water cleaner, but it's also gonna keep it healthier because it's gonna create much more water movement, like putting that fan in the window circulating the air. While we're on the topic of stocking levels, I might as well go ahead and mention that having the appropriate stocking level to begin with can prevent everything we just talked about. Here's the thing, having the appropriate amount of fish in your tank is critical to the overall health of the aquarium. Unfortunately, there's no rules to follow on this. What I mean is there's no definitive number for each tank size, like you can have 10 fish in a 10 gallon, 20 in a 20 gallon, and so on. This is something that's gonna depend on the individual fish keeper's setup, feeding habits, and maintenance schedule. There could be one fish keeper that has a 20 gallon tank with 18 tetras in it. He has adequate filtration and feeds his fish twice a day, but he's diligent about monitoring his water parameters and performs water changes whenever they're necessary. Then there's the other guy that has the same 18 fish in a 20 gallon and has a puny filter. This guy also feeds his fish twice a day and doesn't really pay attention to the water parameters. And the only maintenance he does is adding water when it gets low. Which one do you think is gonna look better and be healthier for the fish? It should be obvious. Keeping a lot of fish in a tank and keeping the water healthy is completely up to the fish keeper. It can be done, but you have to understand it's gonna be a lot of work. I wish we lived in a world where all aquarium fish could mix with all other aquarium fish, but unfortunately that is not the reality that we live in. And this is why you're gonna see so many fish keepers with multiple tanks. Different fish require different water parameters, meaning some like a higher pH while others like it lower. Some like the water warm while some like it cool. There's really no getting around this. I have the perfect example right here. These yellow labs like the water to be around 80 degrees, while these goldfish like it to be closer to 70. Another example would be guppies. 
They like their water to be harder with a higher pH, while Lisa's favorite fish, betas, like it to be closer to neutral, which is seven. Yes, many of the fish we keep can adapt to different parameters, and most of them were bred in farms that all have similar water. But if you want to give them the healthiest environment possible so they'll thrive and possibly even breed for you, you'll want to adjust it to their preferences as close as you can. I'm about to give you the best piece of advice ever if you want to put this hobby into easy mode. If you're brand new to this and want to pick fish that'll be the easiest for you to take care of, test your water before you pick them out. If you have a test kit, test your water and then go to the fish store and tell them the results and ask what fish will go best in your water. If you don't have a test kit, take a sample to the store with you. Most fish stores, even the big box ones, will test your water for free. When you have this information, you can select fish that'll thrive in your water without making any adjustments. This is gonna provide them the best environment possible and be a lot less frustrating for you. In every tip I've given you so far, we've talked about maintenance of your aquarium, but what is the appropriate amount of maintenance you have to do? How much cleaning do you have to do in this tank to keep it healthy? Well, just like the other things we've talked about, this is gonna totally depend on your setup, how many fish you have, and how often you feed them. No two tanks are the same, so we've really gotta analyze each tank and then come up with a plan. Let's say you have a 20 gallon tank with a small sponge filter in it. You've got 12 guppies in there with a bunch of live plants and you feed them once a day. The tank looks really good, the fish are happy, and whenever you test your water, you have no ammonia, no nitrites, and your nitrates are between 15 and 20 parts per million. You might barely have to touch this tank because the natural ecosystem in the tank is keeping everything balanced for you. But, now look at the next tank. It's also a 20 gallon with a small sponge filter, no plants at all, and there's 45 guppy fry in it. There's so many fry in it because your other tank that takes care of itself is so healthy, it's producing so many fry, you had to have somewhere to put them. Every time you test the water in this tank, you have no ammonia and no nitrites, but your nitrates are around 50 parts per million. With this many fish and the lack of plants, this tank will probably never balance out like the other one, and you'll need to do tons of water changes to keep the nitrates down. Our goal is to have the healthiest tank possible, so in tank number two, we want to do as many water changes as needed to keep those nitrates below 20 parts per million. If we keep those nitrates low, the fish will thrive and grow super fast, and before you know it, you'll have more guppies than you know what to do with. The biggest thing is to always be testing your water no matter what your setup is. This way, you get those numbers and you can base your maintenance schedule on that. If you've been in this hobby for longer than five minutes, you've probably already heard, don't overfeed your fish. But why? Look, I get it. Every time you walk by your tank, the fish go crazy like they're begging you to feed them. I understand it makes you feel sorry for them and you feed them way more than you should. I was that way when I first started too. Fish are very different from other animals. Your dog is always begging you for food too. And what would happen if you gave your dog a treat every single time he begged for one? Your dog would end up getting fat and lazy and live a much shorter life. Well, with fish, it's even worse when you overfeed them because they're swimming around in their own toilet. The more you feed them, the more they'll get fat, but it's also going to foul up the water because more food equals more poop. Yeah, your dog is going to poop more if you feed them more too, but the difference between your dog and fish is your dog doesn't have to live in that poop. So does this mean you should just starve your fish? Absolutely not. Just understand that if you're going to feed them a lot, you're going to be doing a whole lot of work just to keep everything balanced and keep the healthiest environment for your fish. The great thing about the fish keeping hobby is we have the ability to know exactly what's going on with our tank at all times. If you're concerned that you're feeding your fish too much, test your water. See what all the food is doing to the water. If your test is saying there's no ammonia or nitrites and the nitrates are below 20 parts per million, don't worry about it. But 
If you do your test and the nitrates are through the roof, you'll either need to cut back on feeding or increase your maintenance. Or you could just keep things simple and just feed your fish once a day and make sure you're giving them enough so that there's not a bunch of extra food laying around the bottom of the tank. That's how we do it in all of our tanks and we rarely have any major problems. If there's one thing I want you to get from this video, it's that the health of your aquarium is gonna totally be dependent on you. If you want the healthiest environment possible, you're gonna make sure that you set it up with the right equipment, you're not feeding them too much, you're always monitoring your water to see what's going on, and you're gonna keep up with your maintenance. Oh, <laughs> is that all? Oh, and if you don't have one already, buy a test kit. Did you notice we talked about test kits in almost every segment of this video? They are absolutely critical to ensuring that you're providing the healthiest environment possible for your fish. So that's it for me today. I don't know how I was able to get through this one. It was such a struggle to get it done before today, but I don't know. Uh, today's the day, I guess. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this. And until I see you again, take care.